In Romans chapter 10, the Apostle Paul says, How can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they've not heard? And how can they hear without a quality sound system? I mean, without someone preaching to them. You know what I'm talking about. Hi, I'm Pastor Jet Jones. And the last thing that we want to do in worship here is to cause a distraction with our equipment. And so what we're looking in the capital campaign of doing is to enhance our equipment here in our worship center to best get the gospel message clearly out to people in the word of God being preached and in our music and worship. What we're looking at doing is upgrading our digital board back here in the booth to expand our capabilities. We're gonna have a, an audio engineer come in and, and study the room to get us a speaker system that's gonna bring greater clarity and precision to what we're trying to do here. Lastly, what we like to do in this campaign is to enhance our video production. Right now we have standard definition cameras and they do a great job, but what we need to do is move forward into the future with some 4K cameras to help as we move into streaming video to other locations, doing digital editing. And this, these funds that we're gonna raise are gonna help us to be able to do that, to take the gospel message to more and more people online and here in this facility. I'm so thankful for this church, for the, the heart of you people that are willing to obey the voice of God, to, to contribute, to give, to this campaign so that more and more people and lives can be transformed with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you. I'm Phyllis Lyside. Being a member here and helping with the first building built on this property, I feel the capital campaign, Hearts for His House, is very important. The expansion of the lobby area will be a great improvement because it is very, very crowded and very unwelcoming to our visitors. Because if, it, as a visitor, if you're coming in and there's no place to stand, you're going to be, feel very uncomfortable and maybe leave. It will also give us a, 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 the ability to have more seating for fellowship. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Nanette Lenz and I'm the director of St. John Lutheran Preschool. <clears throat> I wanted to take a moment and share with you what we do here each and every day at the preschool. We see the preschool not only as a mission but also an outreach of St. John Lutheran Church. Every year we have families that walk through this door that list no church home on their paperwork. This year alone there are over 49 families that say they have no church home. We see this as an opportunity to share Jesus, not only with these, these children that walk through the doors, but also with their families. This year, we will begin a new program where we're sending backpacks home. Inside the backpacks, we will have adult Bibles, children's Bibles, family devotions, and activities that allows us to take Jesus straight out of the classroom and put it into the, into the homes. We have been a benefactor already of the capital campaign. We are so excited to all be under one roof, but besides that, we are able to open our doors to at least 12 more families that we would not have been able to do before the capital campaign. On behalf of the preschool staff, I just wanna say thank you. It is a joy to be a, a part of the mission, spirit, and the generosity of St. John Lutheran Church. Thank you. Hello, 
my name is Chris and I'm going to talk about the missions program at St. John's. Uh, Jesus said that we are to be the light and salt to the world. Uh, salt in Jesus' day was something valuable. He added it to food to make it taste good. And uh, Jesus has this message for us and it's good. And that's something that we can bring to the world. Light is something that illuminates it uh, chases away the darkness of the unknown. It uh, brings us hope. And Jesus said, we bring that light. Not that the, the light comes from us or that the, the salt comes from us, but it comes from Jesus. And we have this as a gift to give to everyone around us. I want to say the missions in, at St. John's is about uh, bringing this good news to people that don't know it. And it's going to have two parts in our, in our missions. The, the first part is a relationship that we build with other people. And the second part is making sure that we deliver this good gospel message. So in all the uh, mission activities that we're looking at are gonna have those two parts. Uh, as we go forward, look for uh, opportunities. First, we're taking a, a survey to collect information about what our members feel passionate about in terms of mission. Next, we're gonna be offering some uh, classes and training to help us to become better missionaries and finally, we're going to be putting together some activities that allow us to go out and spread this good news with people that don't know it, both locally, nationally, and globally. Hello, my name is Linda Matheson, and welcome to Shoebox's Operation Christmas Child. St. John has packed shoeboxes over the years, and this year I'm encouraging you to join me as we join together in St. John's capital campaign, Hearts for His House. Through the shoeboxes, we can connect with each other, have a little packing party. We connect with through fun toys, school supplies, hygiene items, and clothing to the children around the world. And also, the most important thing is that Shoebox connects each of those children to Jesus. Please help me and join me in praying for these shoeboxes as we connect with others, especially the children around the world, and open up our hearts for his house. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Pastor Tim, and I'm super excited about this Heart for His House capital campaign we're doing. And you might have heard by now there are a lot of different portions to it, but one is debt reduction. And I have to tell you, I've been a part of multiple campaigns, and at my last church, oh I forgot you're not supposed to say that, at my last church, well at my last church, we had one for a youth building and debt reduction. And I'm telling you, the hardest thing to try to convince people was how exciting debt reduction was. But let me tell you, it is exciting, and here's why. If we actually put the money that we're talking about putting towards debt reduction over the next three years, by that time, we will have knocked out $120,000 a year of payments that we could be using for other areas of ministry. Who knows what we could do about hiring more staff individuals, using that money uh, to just reach the people for the love of Jesus and that he has for them. So while it may not be all that exciting as a building and missions and, and you name it, it is super, super practical because you get that debt paid down, you are freed up to use what God is bringing here to reach people in their hearts because Jesus has a heart for them. So I've been asked to describe my passion for planting churches. What is it about planting a church that gets me excited? And I've got 90 seconds, so I'll do my best. Many of you have seen the movie God's Not Dead. Well, there's an incredible scene in it towards the enemy where Dean Cain is talking to his mother, his character's mother, who has later on in life been struck with a mental illness, maybe dementia or Alzheimer's, and she doesn't really recognize anyone who comes to speak to her. She hardly talks to him. Dean King's character, you may know, is he's a sinful man, but is incredibly successful, and he's confused. He's talking to his mom, and he says, I don't understand. You went to church. You prayed. You believe. And yet, you don't even know who I am. I'm an awful person, and yet I have everything I like, everything I want. 
I don't understand why your God would let that happen. And his mom snaps out of it just momentarily. And she says, sometimes the devil lets you have the things that make you happy, that lets you live in your sin and your sin becomes a jail cell for you. And you can't escape. You're happy and you're content until it's too late. Now, the takeaway that I get from that is that that's, that's an American society today. We are so blessed with all of the things that we need to keep us healthy. We have clothing and food and shelter. And we want to believe that it was us who did that. But it's not. It was God. God's glory and grace gave that to us. All around us, our community is growing rapidly. And there is a lack of churches. And this church... This plant that we can, we have the opportunity to put out, out there, it allows us to be able to get into that community and reach these people. We can talk to them and we can show them that God has given them because of his love for them, because of the grace he has for us. And through Jesus Christ, he's taking care of us on a daily basis and we could not do anything without him. In the Bible, in Matthew 13, verse 33, Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like yeast a woman uses in making bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. See, planting this church doesn't just reach those people who will come to that church, but we reach the greater community because each one of them gets touched with a little bit of the light of Christ and takes that with them as they walk away and reaches out to more and more and expands his church. That's what our commission is. Hello, everyone. It's Pastor Tim here, and I'm so glad that uh, you're here with us tonight, and you're a part of what God is doing, His heart here for not only His house, but His people. You might recall in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, it's a verse that's quoted often when we talk about uh, tithing and giving to the Lord, but let me remind you what he says. He says, bring into my house all that I've blessed you with, and he promises that he will also bless us. He says, test me in this and see what I will do. You know, there's another verse that I love to bring into that as well. When Jesus came in John chapter 10, he said this, I have come so that you may have life and you may have it abundantly or to the fullest. And I got to tell you, I've spent money in all sorts of different places in my life. and I bet you have too. But I can't recall uh, exactly where it's all gone. And I can recall where some of it is gone. Like, let's say my first car. I don't have that anymore. My second car. I don't have that anymore. But when I give to a capital campaign, when I give to God's house, I see not only are these buildings going up, I see not only are missions happening, not only is debt being reduced, not only are churches being planted, but lives are being changed for eternity. And that's what this is all about. If you want to see Jesus give life and give it abundantly, it first starts with us out of gratitude for what he has done to give back and say, Lord, this is all yours. Use it as you wish. And so I want to challenge you not to give money, but to see where God is moving in your heart. Because this campaign isn't about money. It's about the hearts and lives of people for eternity. And so what we're asking you to do is pray. We're asking you to pray about what God is putting on your heart. And if you're married, your spouse's heart, maybe even talk to your kiddos about this. If you have kids at home, this is a family family mission. And after you pray about it, we're not even asking for equal giving. We're asking for equal sacrifice. And this may be your very first start or financial dance with God, if you will, of saying, Lord, I don't know about this. I don't, I've never, never tithed even, but maybe this is the time to start. And if you're starting, just take that leap of faith. Say, you know what, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm just going to, going to, going to pledge maybe a little bit and see what happens. And then go back to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, and remember the promise of God. Test me in this and see how I will bless you. You will be blessed and many will be blessed around you as you have a heart not only for his house, but for those who don't know him yet. Thanks for watching this and God bless you.